Hello, mountain bikers. Jeff Bryant's here with a look at the 2021 Transition Sentinel. First things first, I have zero time on this bike, so why am I doing this? Well, I've got a bunch of time on the previous iteration of the Sentinel. In fact, I just put out a video on that bike if you guys want to go take a look. Um, I've also got about 20 years of racing experience, and I've been a professional product tester. So uh, I just wanted to give my thoughts as to what Transition is releasing, and yes, I do hope to throw a leg over it in the near future. Uh, big question we all have is, should I upgrade? And is this a, an evolution or a revolution for the bike brand? I'll get into both of those in a minute. First, some specs. So the first thing that stands out is transition bump the travel up from 140 millimeters to 150 millimeters. Uh, the second thing is they changed the leverage ratio curve to be uh, about 25% progressive from 10% progressive. Third, the geometry is very close. The head tube angle is a half a degree slacker. The chain stays are five millimeters longer and the reach literally a hair longer, like one millimeter unless you get into the XXL size. Uh, the rear end has a little more clearance, weight's about the same, aesthetics definitely improved. Transition says they're using some fancy Japanese carbon fiber, sounds cool, the bikes look awesome. I have no idea if the old one was made out of this fi carbon fiber as well. Uh, is this something like a coveted samurai sword? All these are questions that I don't have answers to. Uh, a big surprise to me is the bike is coming with 36 in lyrics as opposed to something 38 millimeter stanchioned. I don't know if that's a word. Um, I guess it, when you look at the intended use, it makes sense, but I did kind of expect the, the company to go with the, the 38, considering this is kind of their rough and rowdy long travel 2.9er. Uh, another thing, the bike's no longer offered in alloy, so those looking for a lower priced option, they're out of luck. So what are the big takeaways here? First things first, the travel being bumped up to 150. It's impossible to ignore that. Uh, that said, it can still be run at 140 millimeter. Um, you just have to change your shock spacer settings. In fact, you could even run your old shock from your old Sentinel on your new bike um, again, you're just going to have to monkey with your spacers if you're so inclined. Uh, the second big thing is going to be the leverage ratio curve. This is probably the biggest thing. Um, going from 2.8 to 2.1, I believe, and it no longer has that funky, weird U-shape. It's just a straight line from 2.8 to 2.15 or whatever it is. Uh, this is going to be something you're really going to note on the trail. Uh, and finally, the lifetime warranty. Um, should you upgrade? The answer to that is a big maybe. Personally, if I had a Sentinel, I'd just keep it. I'd take the hard-earned cash that I'd be spending on the new bike and I'd put a better shock on it. Uh, as I've noted before, I really like the Super Deluxe with Megneg. Uh, maybe I'd buy a second set of wheels and put some DH tires or maybe some light tires and just kind of work with the bike's already good versatility with product and component changes. The two bikes, the new one and the old one, are going to ride so similarly. I don't even think my times on a closed circuit test track would change at all. I think they'd be very much the same if you ran the same suspension, you know, same products, that sort of thing. Conversely, if you are in the market for a new bike, if your old bike's clapped, if you want to run a coil or you want to run a float X2, the upgrade may prove worth it. It's nice to have that extra 10 millimeters and combined with a more uh, progressive leverage ratio curve, you're going to feel as though the bike has even more travel. Uh, the bike does look to retain all its versatility it had in its freshman iteration. Overall, if I had one bike uh, to own the rest of my life, I'd put this on a short list. Like if I was given that opportunity, like you have to pick one bike right now and this is the last bike you get to own. I don't know that I could find a better one than this. Uh, lifetime warranty, it's a big plus. Uh, geometry that I don't think is going to get much better at this point. Um, and it's going to have enough travel to get me out of tricky situations, but not so much that I'm scared to take it on a 30 or 40 mile ride. Uh, if I'm looking for a complete and total race dominating machine, especially as a privateer, I don't think this is the best option. Um, just because I need more forgiveness. If you are a very precise rider, I think it's a very good option. And I also think that transition is going to back you up. So if you break apart, it's going to be your doorstep pretty quickly. I've had that happen for me many a time. And that's something that needs to be looked at, especially with all the direct to consumers out there where it's hard to find parts, that sort of thing. Um, so really, this is a bike meant for people that want to go I mean, not to be cliche, have a party in the woods. So I think they hit the nail on the head. I'm looking forward to throwing a leg over it. Uh, great job from the crew at Transition Bikes.